So hello everyone! When we left off, we were just beginning to talk about the core vector GIS toolkit that we're going to be using for analysis. And the first thing that we want to do is talk about how do we go about selecting geographic information. And by selecting information, I'm just talking about being able to identify a subset of some data set according to some criteria. And since we're talking about doing analysis within the vector data model, it might not surprise you to learn that there are two main ways for us to systematically select vector data. So one way to systematically select GIS data is based on the attributes, the aspatial characteristics of the data. And the other way to systematically make a selection is to select the data set based on the geometry or the spatial characteristics of the data. And now note that I am saying this, uh, this word systematically here because it is often pointed out that there are some other ways that you can select GIS data and do that in a rather uh, ad hoc and uh, arbitrary way, such as with the pointer tool that many GIS software packages provide by allowing you, to, and that allows you to just go around and click on different features or drag a, a box across different features in the project and select them. And of course we could also just open up the attribute table of the vector data files and go in there and arbitrarily choose some of those uh, rows uh, that interest us in the table. So yes, we can definitely uh, select information like that that is a way of selecting GIS data, very true. But what I want to focus on in uh, this video lesson and the next are ways of systematically uh, selecting GIS data. So our two uh, major ways are then by attributes and by location. So querying the aspatial attributes of the data through the attribute table is called selection by attribute. Whereas querying the geometry and the spatial characteristics of the data is called uh, a selection by location. And here again, what you're going to find is that these are very simple in principle, but that they're both, in fact, extremely powerful in practice. In fact, there are many GIS problems that can be solved and many GIS questions that can be answered simply by the application of selection by attributes and selection by location in the correct order. So even here in uh, uh, these two components of the core GIS toolkit, you're going to get the capability to answer lots of questions and to solve lots of problems. So the ability to identify which of these queries it's appropriate to use in particular circumstances and then be able to successfully execute both of these in a software package is an absolutely essential part of your GIS skills. So we're going to look first at selection by attribute. Selection by attribute, which you may have played with already, is your method for conducting queries based on the tabular attribute tables of the vector data. If you need to query information that's held in the attribute table of some vector data set, your method for getting at the information held, uh, held in those data tables is selection by attribute. Which fire hydrants were tested last week? Which trees are of a particular species? Which trees on campus were pruned within the last month? Which battles were fought between the years 1800 and 1850? All of those are questions that could be answered by an appropriate query on an attribute table. Uh, I can quickly get at this information and questions like this, or answers to questions like this, because that's precisely the kind of information that's stored in attribute tables. And then of course, plus, remember that there's that link between the geometry and the attributes and the data tables. That's the fundamental part of the vector data model. So if I were able to query all of the attribute tables for all of the trees that are of a certain species, then I could instantly look at their geometry to see the geographic distribution of the trees with that particular characteristic. But what's really important to realize here is the types of questions that can be answered by using a query uh, on the attribute table, being able to recognize what, what types of questions can be answered through this kind of query is very important. Once you've made that realization uh, about, which, uh, about when to use this particular kind of query, it's the case that attribute queries are made in a very special way and according to a very certain structure. The queries are made with SQL, and that stands for the Structured Query Language. This is another one of those circumstances where if you have a background in information science or take classes in databases, you are also use SQL. This is not something that's GIS specific. It's a standardized language that's used for querying information in tables. 
So since table queries are something that we need to do in GIS, uh, and that's how uh, the attribute information is stored in these data tables. The field of GIS just imported SQL for constructing these attribute queries. So attribute queries are very common in GIS, and so it's very important that even uh, entry-level GIS analysts uh, learn at least the basics of SQL and be able to write at least simple queries. But the more SQL that you learn, the more sophisticated the query you're going to be able to write and execute. And this is going to allow you to extract more information much more easily from attribute tables. If you may have a shapefile, for instance, that has thousands of features in it, and you need to be able to select all of those uh, features, just those features that have a particular characteristic. If you know how to write SQL queries, this may be extremely easy for you. If not, it may be very difficult. If you're using a program like Esri's ArcMap, you will notice that it does try to help you a little bit in writing your SQL queries for selection by attribute. ArcMap does have that window that pops up and looks like a little wizard entry tool that allows you to click different buttons and it will automatically generate the SQL syntax based on the buttons that you click. This is helpful because SQL is uh, very particular about having spaces, commas, quotation marks, and other punctuation in exactly the right place. If you just know that SQL or if you just know SQL syntax uh, because you know SQL, then you can just directly type the query that you want into that box. But uh, even if you're using the button clicking method, you need to know what buttons to click and in what order. So let's look at the very basic structure of an SQL query and talk about some very basic uh, but useful SQL queries. An SQL query in general looks something like this. Select column name from table name where column name operator value. Now that may seem a little bit cryptic to you and so that's the format so let's take a look at uh, what we'd actually be typing in there in a little bit more detail. So but basically what that syntax is uh, trying to say is that you're asking the computer to select something from a certain table of data that meets a certain criteria uh, in a certain column. Uh, it seems a little backwards uh, to some people that it's uh, in the syntax since the table that you're querying comes second uh, rather than the field, but that's okay. The table that you're querying in the context of SQL will be the data files attribute table. Okay, and then the column name is going to be the field of that table that you want to base your query on. Then the operator value is where you specify the criteria that you want to be able to use or you want to use to execute that query. If you use the select by attribute dialog box in ArcGIS, then you're going to notice that it tries to help you set up this query by writing something like this along the top of the query builder dialog box. Select asterisk from data file uh, name where and then you type in your query with its operator for instance if I wanted to query a file of all of the United States uh, or all of the states in the United States based on their names and I wanted only the state in this case there would just be one named Illinois then I could type in here's the operator state name in double quotes is equal to Illinois in single quotes so if the field in the state's data file that contained all of the names of the states was called state name, then it would go through and find uh, that particular feature that has the state name field, uh, say Illinois. Note that SQL is very particular about being case sensitive and ensuring punctuation is in the right places. And of course you have to use the right field names in order to execute a, fear, uh, a query on that field. But this is the basic structure of an SQL query. And then from there, SQL lets you get much more sophisticated if you like. Uh, if you wanted to get to know which states, ha if you wanted to know which states had a population of greater than or equal to six million people, and the population information for each of your states was stored in a field named population, then I could just type in the query population in double quotes greater than or equal to six million in single quotes. SQL recognizes all of the standard inequality operators such as greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. But remember uh, that if you want to be able to perform queries using these mathematical operators on fields, 
then the fields will have to be numeric data types. If the information has been accidentally stored in a text field, for instance, you're going to have a problem executing your query. The computer can determine which features have a value in a particular field that are greater than or less than three, but it can't determine which uh, rows in a field have values of greater than or less than the character three. So you can see here why it's very important to make sure that your data is stored in fields with the correct type. It's, if you don't, you're not going to be able to correctly execute your queries. Uh, anyway, you can get much more sophisticated with the SQL queries and will probably have to in order to solve increasingly advanced problems. I can't get into too much of the details of SQL queries in this video. I think that's better left a dedicated study, uh, perhaps in a different format. And being a standardized language, there's already lots of material on the web for learning SQL that's available for free. Uh, however, I do recommend learning as much about constructing SQL queries as you can, either by taking a course in databases or really just by going through all of the material that you can find online, because there's a lot of material online that can be accessed about SQL for free. And the more you know, the more you will uh, be able to easily construct and execute more efficient attribute queries, and that's going to make you much more efficient in your GIS analysis.